Hi, I'm Nathan with Holston Gases. During this training module, we're going to talk about the gas metal arc welding process, and more specifically, we're going to talk about short circuit metal transfer. We're going to talk about what short circuit metal transfer is, how to set the machine for short circuit transfer, how to recognize short circuit transfer by sound, the shielding gas, the voltage, the wire feed speed, electrical stick out, and all the other parameters that are associated with short circuit transfer. So short circuit metal transfer is a mode of metal transfer where the wire contacts the plate or the surface to be welded on, shorts out, deposits filler metal as weld metal, and then the cycle starts over again. And this happens between 60 and 250 times per second. Now the best way to understand this is to see it on a high speed camera because you can't see these short circuits occur with the naked eye. So here is a video clip of short circuit transfer at 4,000 frames per second. This really helps you understand what is going on beneath the arc. And once you see this, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So during this film, you can see that the wire shorts out, a small explosion occurs, spatter is generated, the arc opens back up, and then it shorts out, and opens back up, and shorts out, and does this cycle, like I said, 60 to 300 times per second. So because the arc extinguishes is why this is a low heat input process and is why you can weld out of position. You can weld over gaps. It's good for open root pipe welding. And it's really good for very thin material, sheet metal or, or car body work. Now some of the limitations of short circuit transfer are that it's not well suited for thick materials because of the low heat input it doesn't produce very much penetration. So we'll be using a Millermatic 252 with a 75% argon, 25% CO2 shielding gas mixture, along with an O35 solid wire. Now to speak real quickly on the shielding gas mixtures, keep in mind that there are many different types of shielding gases out there that can be used with short circuit transfer. The type of gas mixture that is used really depends on the application or the variety of applications in the shop. So as long as you're using a 75% argon up to a 95% argon, with a balanced CO2, you should be in good shape. This should produce a very stable short circuit transfer. Typically, the thicker the material, the more CO2. The thinner the material, the lower amounts of CO2. Also bear in mind, the more CO2 that's in the shielding gas mixture, the higher the voltage required to maintain a stable short circuit transfer. So as an example, if you are currently using a 75% argon, 25% CO2 shielding gas mixture for short circuit transfer and you already had a set of welding parameters developed and you changed to a 90% argon, 10% CO2, you may have to drop the voltage one or two volts to maintain that uh, steady short circuit transfer with the same wire feed speed. So keep these things in mind and it'll make more sense as we go through this topic. So now we're going to talk about setting the parameters. So fortunately a lot of the newer machines have these drop down menus with a list of general settings. But then the question is posed, well what if I don't have that? What can I use as a good rule of thumb to set the machine for the welds that I need to make? Well that's a good question and there are some good rules of thumb out there. And Basically, it comes down to you set the parameters for the size material that you're welding on to get you started. So, as an example, if we have an eighth inch piece of material we need to weld, we know that it takes one amp for every one one thousandth of an inch of material thickness. So, if an eighth inch piece of material in decimal form is 0.125, that tells us that we need 125 amps as a good starting point for that weld joint. Okay, well that's nice and dandy and everything, but 125 amps, I don't see a setting for amperage on this machine. Well, you're right, you don't. But you have a wire feed speed setting. And wire feed speed and the gas metal arc welding process is also adjusting the welding current. So how do I know what wire feed speed coordinates with what amperage? 
That's a good question. Well, there's some multipliers out there uh, depending on the size of wire that you're using. So if you're using an 035 wire, then you'll want to multiply by 1.6. That's the multiplier. Multiply the welding current by 1.6. So 125 times 1.6 is 200 so that's 200 inches per minute so we'll set the machine for 200 inches per minute now that still leaves up the voltage unclear we don't know where to set the voltage but we can set the voltage based off where the wire feed speed setting is at once we listen to the arc we'll be able to tell which direction to go so we're going to do that here in just a moment so you can see what it's supposed to sound like so before we start welding, we need to discuss one more welding parameter or welding variable, and that's your electrode extension. The electrode extension is the distance from the end of the contact tip to the welding arc, to the actual arc. Okay, For short circuit welding, it's important to maintain a quarter to three-eighths inch electrical stick out. For spray transfer, a half inch to three-quarter inch is mostly recommended. Now to ensure that you can maintain this electrode extension, it's important to have the correct contact tip to nozzle configuration. So for short circuit transfer, we like to use a flush or extended nozzle. And when I say that, this is what I mean. This means that the contact tip sits flush with the end of the nozzle. This helps us maintain that shorter stick out so we can have a stable arc transfer. Okay. Also, we can use an extended up to an eighth of an inch. And so see here, you, you see with this nozzle we can have the contact tip extended. And so what this does, this is allows us to get closer to the weld pool to maintain that quarter to three eighths inch. Now for spray transfer, we would want our contact tip to be recessed in an eighth of an inch. This protects the contact tip of the higher heat process, okay, and also allows us to easier maintain that half to three quarter inch stick out without sacrificing gas coverage because we can still stay a little bit closer, but our contact tip is, is sucked back in the nozzle. So if you don't, if you were to try to short circuit weld with this, what you would probably see is you would see the guys welding with a longer stick out than recommended and so that's going to produce some very spattery starts, uh, lower cu welding currents and lower voltages which may lead to lack of fusion. Uh, so keep this in mind when you're setting up the welding process for short circuit transfer that you maintain the appropriate quarter to three eighths of an inch of electrode extension. <clears throat> so now that we're ready to weld I have the machine set at 14 volts and 200 inches per minute. So I'm going to strike an arc and we're going to listen to it and then look at the weld and decide where to go from there. Okay, notice the start was kind of hard and it was kind of spattery and the weld sounded pretty good but it still sounded a little bit unstable so to improve the instability i'm going to turn the voltage up one volt i usually only turn the voltage up at one in one volt increments and we'll see if we get any better results so now i've turned the voltage up to one volt and i'm going to strike the arc again and see where we go still rather unstable so I'm going to turn it up another volt. Okay, so after that I can see that the weld generated very little spatter and the welding arc was very consistent and that was 16 volts at 200 inches per minute. 
So here's the finished product. You can see that the weld has a nice smooth profile and there is very little spatter generated. Another good telltale sign if you were in a good stable short circuit transfer is the small ball at the end of the wire when you're done welding. Notice that the ball is about the size of the diameter of the, of the wire, just, or maybe just slightly larger, this is a good indication that we were in short circuit transfer. If the ball is two or three times larger than the end of the wire, that's a good indication that you were not in short circuit and that you may have been in globular transfer. So everything right there looks very good and tells me that we're in a nice short circuit transfer. But most importantly, we could tell by the sound of the arc. And so we ended up at 16 volts and 200 inches per minute. So now that we had it set at 200 inches per minute and 16 volts, we were able to achieve a nice stable short circuit transfer. But some of the pushback that we might get with that set of parameters is that's awful slow. And it's true, that is a very, very slow set of welding parameters uh, for eighth inch material. We can actually increase that quite a bit and still maintain short circuit transfer. So let's just say we increase the wire feed speed up to 350 inches per minute. So that's a pretty significant increase in wire feed speed, which will cause us to travel faster, which increases our productivity and our deposition rates. Now the question would be, well, where do we set the voltage? Well, we can certainly bet that we're going to have to increase the voltage since we increased the wire feed speed. So how much? Well, we'll have to see. Typically, I like to just increase it in one volt or even half volt increments until I get that stable short circuit sound that we seen earlier. So right now I'm going to leave it at 16 volts just so we can see what it sounds like even though I know it's going to be too low of a voltage. So it's pretty easy to tell that that was really too cold, it caused a really rough start and the weld just never materialized. So I'm going to turn it up one volt to 17 volts and we'll try again. Okay, that was a little bit better. We were able to get a nice start, but there's still a considerable amount of spatter being generated and it still sounded a little unstable. So now from this point, I'm gonna go up just a half of a volt at a time until I get that really nice stable short circuit sound that we talked about. Right there is pretty close, sounded like bacon frying, but I still think we need just a little bit more voltage. I'm going to go up two tenths of a volt. So the 17.7 volts and 350 inches per minute produced a nice stable short circuit transfer. And we could tell by the sound of the arc that it was stable and producing very little spatter, as you can see from the weld bead profile. So that is how we set up the short circuit mode of metal transfer for the gas metal arc welding process. Well, that concludes this segment on the short circuit mode of metal transfer and the gas metal arc welding process. We talked about what short circuit transfer is, how to set a machine for short circuit transfer, and how to recognize by sound short circuit transfer. I hope you have found this training module very helpful, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give me a call. Thank you very much.